live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Tom Johnson begins now. Good evening, everyone. Public Health has revealed Tasmania's second confirmed coronavirus victim was told to self-isolate but visited bars and his workplace while awaiting test results. Authorities are strongly urging the public to adhere to advice as concerns grow over more potential cases during the upcoming flu season. The coronavirus crisis, seeing no end in sight, with another Tasmanian diagnosis confirmed. A man in his 20s uh, who has been confirmed as a second case of coronavirus infection in Tasmania. Uh, this case is unrelated to the first case that occurred uh, and was diagnosed in Launceston. The Australian Ideal College student experienced flu-like symptoms on February 27, after returning from a trip to Nepal, transiting through Singapore and Sydney, and presented to the Royal Hobart Hospital on Friday, then tested that evening. But Public Health says the man did not comply with advice to self-quarantine at home. The man was also at the Cargo and Obar uh, between 10pm and 2am on Friday and in brief periods in between he was on the Parliament lawns. Uh, the risk to the public in those from casual contact is low. Also saying he worked as a food and beverage attendant the next day at the Grand Chancellor Hotel. He continued some activities in public and he attended work the following day. Public Health is working with the Grand Chancellor to identify whether any co-workers during their shifts could qualify as close contacts. It's unacceptable that you do not follow the advice and indeed today I've asked the uh, Director of Public Health for further advice on uh, whether or not we need to strengthen measures to ensure compliance with self-isolation. Public Health also seeking to determine whether his illness put passengers at risk on the flights as well as several people at his school. Four of the man's family members now remain in self-isolation as calls continue for further measures measures to be taken in all regions of the state. We want to know from the Tasmanian government what they're going to do uh, to ensure that a system that is already under pressure, how it's going to respond to, uh, uh, to an epidemic. If you're living in a, a, a rural town in Tasmania uh, you, and you have to self-isolate with your whole family for a fortnight, that poses big issues uh, for food supply. With more cases expected as the flu season looms closer. And I think it's likely that there will be infections occurring in Tasmania. There are, however, uh, some people, particularly the elderly, who are more vulnerable to serious consequences of this infection, just as they are from flu. And so it's going to be very important that our care and protection of those people is a priority over, over winter. Well, we're expecting that there, there may be further cases in Tasmania. We are prepared and that is why we escalated to level two uh, two days ago to ensure that we've got the resources and the planning in place. And as the situation continues to be monitored, attention was drawn to a cruise ship docking into Hobart this morning. The Costa Deliziosa, originally departing from Italy, severely hit by the virus pandemic. All ships that are operating within Australian waters or entering Australian waters uh, have got clear advice and engagement with the federal government and we're making sure that that is reiterated before they reach the port here in Tasmania. Anyone who has concerns is urged to contact the Public Health Hotline. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. In a profession long dominated by males, Tasmanian women are bucking the trend as part of our aeromedical rescue teams. As the world celebrates International Women's Day, the passionate crew of experts says it's proud to be a part of the change, encouraging more females to step forward. Packing up, ready to take off for any scenario. Tasmania's helicopter and emergency medical service teams flying to all corners of the state. It's a physically and mentally demanding job. Depending on the day, we, we go wherever we're sent, and that could be anywhere in the state. There isn't really a day-to-day -day, um, prediction about what's going to happen. It's often described as the pinnacle of the career and remains a male-dominated industry. But here in Tasmania, we're bucking the trend. Three female doctors and four paramedics making up our expert staff. A rare but encouraging sight, never knowing where their shift will take them. Sometimes it might be night and you're flying into a really cold environment. Up in the highlands sometimes there might be snow and you're trying to find somebody and you have to do a winch. Celebrating International Women's Day, these crews say it's slow progress, but the number of women in the field and the conditions are finally changing. There is a perception that it's male dominated because often you'll see 
um, pilots and crewmen that are all male, um, but it, it doesn't preclude you coming to work as a female. Urging women to think about the career and not let any barriers get in their way. It's there, go for it. Um, it's a really exciting uh, part of medicine and definitely don't think that um, you're not good enough or that uh, you can't possibly do it. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. A fresh forecast of low temperatures and rain did little to, det to deter thousands of famished foodies from flocking to day one of the Taste of the Huon Festival. Now in its 28th year, it aims to show off the region's finest produce, food and family-friendly entertainment. The weather may have been gloomy, the atmosphere was anything but. Honey, honey, Organisers are expecting a crowd of more than 20,000 people over the two-day event, something they say is vital for the struggling Huon Valley region. Especially after the aftermath of the bushfires last year, which did have a huge impact on local businesses, but we're starting to see a huge turnaround and a lot of people returning to back to the Huon Valley, which is just fantastic for the region. More than 90 stalls highlighting some of the best the region has to offer, from food and drinks to local handmade designs, with many stallholders returning time and time again. So we've been here since the first very taste of the Huon. We're about the only stall that's one of the originals. I think it's about 10 years and it's just a lovely atmosphere. Um, lots of people come and it's good for the Huon Valley to get people out and about and see different things. With plenty on offer, including entertainment and face painting for the children, taste buds were tickled with hundreds of tempting tasty treats on offer. So tell me, John, what is your pick, uh, the best thing to have while we're at Taste of the Huon? Oh, that's a good and hard question, but I cannot go past the oysters. Ready? Oh, that didn't even touch the sides. Oh, how good was that? Well, I had the Korean fried chicken from over the one that stands there, and it was delicious. Oh, the coffee's really nice. Got, got to have a good coffee. Coffee and donuts go together really well, so I hope to have another one of those. And no matter what took your fancy, there was a general consensus. What's been the best part about the day for you guys? Food. Same. A taste of the hue and continues at the Ranelagh Recreation Grounds tomorrow from 10 until 4pm. Ebony Applet, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian charity aiming to inspire and empower women into finding employment and financial independence has held its first fundraising event as part of International Women's Day. More than 50 people gathered at Hobart's In the Hanging Garden for morning yoga and brunch, raising vital funds for Dress for Success. So Dress for Success empowers women into employment by giving them the clothing and tools and skills that they need to uh, achieve economic independence through employment. I just thought it was a positive way to celebrate women on International Women's Day and I feel really strongly about Dress for Success. The event raised more than $3,000 to go towards providing local women with interview attire and career development opportunities. Vintage machines of all shapes and sizes have rolled into Sheffield for the annual Steam Fest event. For the owners, it's an opportunity to get their vehicle's engines roaring again, some more than a century old. For one weekend a year, Terry Dooley relishes the opportunity to dust off his 93-year-old pride and joy. It's nice to get the engine out and, and just let it uh, be shown to the people. Susie, the 1927 Aveling and Porter steamroller, returning to her former glory. This was all that was available after the horses. Of course, we didn't have tractors, we didn't have modern rollers. From eight-ton towers to okay. tiny tuggers. You see everything working, it's, um, they feel good. If you run into someone, you don't do much damage. The affection for the engines of yesteryear proudly on show at Steamfest. Warren Seaborn has the world's oldest tractor in his possession, but it's this shiny new toy that's stolen his heart. The fact that it's steam and what it can do and the way it operates, and you're not buying petrol. As the trailblazing machines of early agriculture churned out seats for the public, 
At the front gate, queues for hundreds of metres proved how popular the event is. And the crowd numbers at the moment are, are actually taking us by surprise. Um, we've got all hands on deck just getting people in. Though for the youngest of mines, organisers say time on the train tracks is maybe the best entry point into the historical world of steam. Looking back at how our society was fed and clothed back in the steam era, it's really an education for the whole family. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. And from old steam engines to vintage cars, organisers of the Longford Motorama have heralded the much-anticipated event a success. Vehicles of the past, present and future paraded to thousands of fanatics, with all ages getting the chance to hear about Longford's rich racing history. To, uh, checking out. It's been something that really had to be done uh, to preserve the history of Longford and, and the motor racing and what occurred here. Organisers expect the event to return next year and have revealed a brand new racing competition is also in the works. Tasmania has recorded back-to-back -back wins in the Sheffield Shield competition after thrashing New South Wales by nine wickets at Blunston Arena. The visitors were skittled for just 203 as Sam Rainbird and Nathan Ellis each claimed three wickets. In response, Jordan Silk returned to form, scoring 67 not out, laying the platform for the 132 run chase. The side will play Cellar Dweller Victoria next week in its final match of the season. Kookaburra's captain Eddie Ockenden has celebrated his record-breaking 366th game in style, with Australia defeating Argentina 5-1 in Perth. Blake Govers netted two goals in a stunning return to the international level, but was all praise for the veteran Ockenden. His enthusiasm is just uh, amazing and his team first mentality just really shown today and we got up for him today and got the W, which is good. Future fixtures are now up in the air with Hockey Australia implementing an international travel ban for all its national squads due to fears of coronavirus. Good evening. It was a lovely autumn day for Launceston and Devonport today, 19 degrees, 17 in Burnie and a cooler day for Hobart, 14. King and Flinders Islands along with Smithton, 19 today, the state's high, 17 at Strawn, Ooze and the Friendly Beaches, St Helens, 16, 14 on Mariah Island, Grove 13 and 11 degrees at Liawini. Here we can see low level cloud over much of Tasmania today, particularly about the south and east. There's mid to high level cloud drifting over the bight ahead of a front, while cloud with isolated thunderstorms cover the top end. Tomorrow the high pressure system continues to the west of Tasmania with a ridge over the state. Various troughs continue over the mainland extending from the monsoon trough in the tropics. Southerly winds 10 to 15 knots about the coast tomorrow, more variable about the Bass Strait, seas up to 1 metre, 1 metre rather, and there are no warnings issued for the state tomorrow. Tomorrow in Hobart, a cloudy 16, 17 at Dover and cloudy there, and ooze cloudy 19. A possible light shower in Launceston tomorrow, 19, 18 and partly cloudy in Devonport, and Scottsdale, 17 with a shower or two. Partly cloudy in the west tomorrow, 17 in Burnie, Strawn 18 and 19 for Stanley. Partly cloudy conditions in the east also, 16 at St Helens, 17 for both Swansea and Ross. The UV is high sevens. Looking ahead to Tuesday now, fine apart from light showers about the north, mostly clearing in the afternoon. Fine apart from light showers about the northwest in the evening on Wednesday and Thursday showers about the west and far south, fine elsewhere. Tomorrow, Perth can expect a sunny 35, mostly sunny in Adelaide 27, a shower or two for Sydney 23 and Cairns 32, and mostly sunny in Melbourne 21 degrees. And currently in Hobart it's 13 and partly cloudy, Launceston 17 and sunny, Devonport 16 and partly cloudy. And Tom, lovely choice of tie tonight, it looks like you might have had a special woman's input in choosing that one. Oh, well, funny you say that, Carmen. Turns out for International Women's Day, I'll let my mother choose this uh, tie and shirt combo and she's watching tonight. I love her very much. Well, that's all your news for now. Be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.